buried. The third and final Black Ops 2 installment to the Transit Storyline arc released July 2nd, 2013. While the community was feeling positive towards a new map after the success of Mob, there wasn't much to suggest that this Western-themed map would be a hit. By this point, everyone had realized the mess Transit was, and while Die Rise was certainly tolerated, we all, well, <laughs> most of us, know now how bad that map really is. In terms of an interesting story or strong gameplay, the Transit crew was batting zero for two at this point. And so it's absolutely shocking to look back and see how successful Buried really was. It preceded two of the most bottom tier maps ever produced by Treyarch, and then out of nowhere, just managed to knock it out of the park. And what's even more impressive is that Buried is essentially the only map post Black Ops 1 to be a huge success as a casual map. Every other great map after this would be extremely in-depth with serious tones, and because of this, I think Buried is truly special. To look back on it, it's shocking to see just how good a job they did with this map, and so today we'll be going back through the hot classic to figure out just what made it so good. So Buried actually excels in two ways, rather than how most great maps usually excel in one area with every other facet supporting the central one. And so Buried is a bit of an anomaly in this sense. The most obvious of the two is of course innovation and new features. Buried is one of the most innovative maps of all time, but only sort of. Buried isn't innovative in the sense that it plays with dimensions like Transit or Die Rise. It doesn't add a giant quest or afterlife like Mob. It doesn't change the core gameplay by removing gravity and oxygen like in Moon. There's no single edition that is truly groundbreaking, yet it's still often considered to be one of the most innovative maps of all time. And that's because Buried Innovation comes through features. It doesn't add anything huge, but instead it jam-packed the map with tons of tiny little new things. And I think this is essentially the cornerstone feature of the map. Let's start with Leroy. He's a giant trapped in a cell, and to free him you need to unlock the cage with a key and then feed him a bottle booze. So in one round, these two pieces are already brushing Die Rise's three total items on the map. And Leroy essentially opens everything else up. Leroy is used to access areas like Jug, the church, and mansion. There's even a secret function where if he breaks the fountain on the main side, the maze-sized fountain will act as a portal back to spawn. And that's just the tip of the iceberg with this big guy. Leroy has another feature called Candy, which has so many possibilities. Giving Arthur candy near the box will have him slam it down in place so that you never get teddy bears. Candy next to a drop respins it with the chance to get a max ammo. If he's near a crawler, he will pick it up and keep it safe for as long as you want. He'll fight for you, he'll even build you any buildable if you take him to a workbench. The man does it all. And consider this, Leroy is basically Treyarch's second attempt at the hacker device from Moon, just implemented way more smoothly. Instead of some little tiny box on a workbench that comes with the trade-off of oxygen itself, you get a friendly companion with a real personality. Leroy is extremely practical to use, and he's so well integrated that I think a lot of people don't even realize how similar he is to the hacker. Having to open stuff up with him every single game can get a little stale, but overall, I do love Leroy. Buried adds a lot more than that, however. You've got the Paralyzer, which is to the jet gun as Primus is mentally stable to Ultimus. That is the nerdiest joke I've ever made on this channel. So the Paralyzer freezes zombies in place, and oh wow, shocking new feature doesn't actually break when it overheats. Now that is innovation. The Paralyzer also lets you fly, and while it's a small feature, I think it's yet another detail that builds towards a greater outcome. The map also has a time bomb. Placing it makes a checkpoint, essentially allowing you a redo if you are to make a mistake and down. There's also the Remington New Model Army Pistol, which while cool is mostly a reskin of the Python, and who could forget the Raygun Mark II? I think it's easy to look at the Mark II as a general Black Ops 2 gun, but let's not forget it was a buried addition. This is one of my personal favorite weapons in all of Zombies, and I really think it was a much needed upgrade to a weapon we already see starting to fall behind in the weapon roster. My only complaint is that I wish it had a single fire mode. Ammo just tends to run out quick with that guy, but regardless, it's a great weapon. We've still got so much more though. The map saw PhD finally 
finally return in the form of a perma perk. While it's annoying that it wasn't in previous maps, it's a fun addition that allows players to use explosives. The map also has multiple ways to get free perks. Players with a ballistic knife can head to the bar and hit a bullseye on the dartboard, which triggers the piano to start playing. From there, you just need to head into the mansion, tip the ghost, and you get a free perk. Or for the lazy, literally just kill the witch every five rounds and you'll get one that way too. Speaking of perks, we've also got Vulturate. Now, I'm not going to sit here and act like it isn't OP, but I do love Vulturate. We'll talk about Buried being easy later, but for now, I'll just say, I think Vulturate was a really good idea that just got handled poorly. The enhanced vision, extra perks, and ammo is fantastic. Fantastic, but the green mist is a little ridiculous. Still though, I love it. And every time I play Buried, I get excited remembering that it's on the map. We've also got new buildables. The Subsurface Resonator and Head Chopper are two brand new OP additions that basically serve as ridiculously good defense style buildables. And I'm gonna give bonus points to the Subsurface Resonator for reusing the noise of the scavenger. I just love that noise so much that I'm willing to look past the laziness. But you've also got chalk drawings. The game lets you choose where to put the Remington, AN94, PDW, SVU, and more. It's such a neat addition that also is incentivized with a thousand free points and is yet just another great feature of the map. So overall, Buried adds a lot of little stuff. And when you hear this all added together, you can really get a sense of just how full the map is. But hey, with all these features, can anyone think of a potential problem that the game might run into? I mean, I don't know about you guys, but surely so many crazy things in one map might be pretty hard to balance. Oh, wait, what's that? Buried is the easiest map of all time. Ah, yeah, 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 that, that adds up. Buried's mortal sin is that it's too easy in a problematic way. Now, as we've discussed in many retros, difficulty isn't necessarily bad. Kino is too easy for me personally, but I don't dock at points as challenge is a subjective feature. Buried loses points, however, because of the way it's easy. So if you want to set up in the Juggernaut camping spot with four perks and three pack-a-punch weapons, you're going to have a pretty easy time. But hey, who doesn't like a good camp sesh, right? That's why people love Doris. Sadly, this is just the beginning. Add in the head chopper, subsurface resonator, or trample steam and things become that much easier. Play with four people and have everyone set them all down, well now you literally don't have to shoot. Add in the fact that Vulturade makes you temporarily invincible and this becomes a downright broken strategy. I also probably don't even need to remind you of the solo bank rooftop strat. You literally just camp in Vulturade smell with the paralyzer and it's an easy round 100. But sadly, that's not even the worst part, and that's because Buried has a bank. Everything I just explained can be done on round one. And this is the biggest single problem with Buried. I think because Transit and Die Rise are such unenjoyable and broken maps, the bank makes them a little bit more tolerable. When things don't go your way because of a game flaw, like Pack-a-Punch not opening on Transit, you don't feel so bad about taking 30 grand and going wild on the box. But on Buried, it's another story. Because the map sets you up for success and is actually good, for the first time we were able to clearly see what a problem the bank is. It takes away the sense of accomplishment for achieving a good setup legitimately, and is a constant temptation in the back of your mind when something doesn't go your way. There's a reason Jason didn't add them to Mob and Origins, and I think both maps would have really suffered otherwise. I think it might even be safe to say that the bank is the most single game-breaking feature to ever be placed in Zombies, and it was only in Buried that we really saw how bad it was. But as previously mentioned, Buried offers a lot more than just features. Atmospherically, the map map is really impressive. Think about how many unique places Buried has to offer. Weighing in at 18 and a half Nocturne Totems, it's not a huge map, but I think it does a really good job of utilizing space to the best of its abilities. Think about all the cool areas here. I still don't even understand what spawn is supposed to be or how it's all still operating, but at least it's super cool. Actually, if anyone could explain spawn to me, that would be really awesome. <laughs> But of course there's more. From here we can head down into the map itself. One of the often forgotten areas of Buried are the upper tunnels which connect the Quick Revive area to both the saloon and the courthouse. Behind the main section of the map sits the mansion, a brief passing through area which really has a dark and evil vibe to it. Behind the mansion lies the maze, and despite offering little in terms of its overall size, it really is a neat place on the map, especially for Pack-a-Punch. And of course the main town area is fantastic, full of all sorts of neat buildings with tons of character. 
The bar feels atmospheric and full of memories. The candy shop is colorful and exciting, and the general store just feels spot on for a general store. Every area here sits on its own while also working with the other places to make something greater than the sum of its parts. Buried is an awesome place to explore, and it's got some of the best soundtrack and ambient noises in all of Zombies. Black Ops 2 is also the only Treyarch Zombies game to have a legitimate super easter egg ending, and as the finality, Buried gets a lot of points for this. Actually, the reason I haven't touched on this in previous videos is that despite being shared by Transit and Die Rise, the super easter egg really belongs to Buried. Buried's easter egg is so good that it makes doing the other horrible maps actually worth it. Transit's easter egg essentially sets the scene. Maxis and Richtofen are working against each other to secure the ether through the help of the Victus group. The steps are boring, however, and players are rewarded with literally nothing. Dairise picks it up a bit with some better steps and full perks upon completion, but the problem here is that it does nothing to progress the storyline. And so because of this, the payoff of the arc is left entirely to Buried, where it fortunately does deliver. Despite Transit and Dairise Easter Eggs being a literal bag of Richard Nixons, the neat features of the Easter Egg are that you get to pick your side. You can choose to follow Maxis or Richtofen. What's especially neat about this is that a lot of steps tend to mirror each other. For example, on Buried's Maxis side, you must use the subsurface resonator to destroy four glowing orbs, whereas for Richtofen you'd actually be charging them. The Super Easter Egg also has these nav card tables, which are needed to link each map and beacon to each other. The nav cards are located on other maps though, and so this really unites the three together and gives a huge satisfaction when all three beacons are lit. The Buried Easter Egg itself also has some really cool steps, and I think it's got one of the best blends of both puzzles and action. But of them all, no step is more iconic than Sharpshooter. I mean, honestly, is there any step more notorious in all of Zombies? Four locations around the map start showing targets, and all four players must get 100% accuracy on 20 plus targets or you fail. Not only does this demand skill, but talk about teamwork and patience. It's a great final step in an overall fantastic easter egg. Then, once completed, if all four players have linked their nav cards and beaten all three easter eggs on the same side, a button becomes available in the courthouse. Pressing it completes the super easter egg and gives you your ending. If Richtofen wins, he will take over Samuel's body and have Maxis erased from the universe. As a bonus, all players will have a permanent fire sale along with full perks and a variant of Mule Kick that gives the player four weapons. While not quite as cool, if Maxis is victorious, the game goes orange and Richtofen's soul gets put into a zombie doomed to die over and over. Killing the Richtofen zombie also gives you a free drop every time. And while both endings aren't as credible as Moon or Mob of the Dead, I would still put this above the Origins and Revelations ending as they at least give closure. So Buried is a great conclusion to an otherwise poor trio of maps, and I'm really happy that the team were able to at least hit one for three here. It was the last map led by Jimmy Zielinski, and it's nice to see him end on a high note. While people do like to meme the guy, I still genuinely think that there was a method to his madness. And while he may not have been as consistent as Blundell in his prime, you gotta give the guy some credit. Jimmy took risks, and he never stuck to the same formula. He was all about the chaotic zombies energy. Wonder weapons in the box, astronauts steals a random perks, walkways that don't go where you want them to, and buses which don't wait for you. While frustrating at times, this formula of chaos would come to be missed, and I think Black Ops 3 followed a line that was almost a little bit too linear. But because Black Ops 2 blends order and chaos from the two famous developmental philosophies, we get a nice mix of both. So overall, I think Buried serves as a great casual map for new fans to get into the deeper side of zombies. It's complex and there's depth to it, but it can also be really easy and simple if that's what you want to make it. It's got a fantastic overall vibe with tons of cool lore and really doesn't do a whole lot wrong. The only bad thing I have to say about Buried is that it's just way too easy. Even without the bank, I would probably still have my complaints, but as it exists, it's just way too much. This means that I can't take Buried seriously, but despite this, I am able to have a great time with it. Maybe it's not meant to be taken seriously. And while it may not be up to the level of Origins and Mob, it did a good job of sweeping up the bronze trophy for Black Ops 2. And it allowed the Transit series to be put to rest with at least a modicum of respect. And so despite this huge one flaw, I'm able to find and appreciate the greatness that lies within this map. It's the only time Zombies has ever managed to nail a big map while remaining casual, and I think that says a lot. As a lead developer, it was both Jimmy Zielinski's final map and his best. And so finally, after 8 maps, 1F, 
one D, two Bs, and four As, it's time we give this man the credit he deserves. My final rating for Buried is a 9 out of 10. S tier.